Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. I have learned a lot of new terminology this week as I have looked into our topic. Starting tomorrow, we'll be looking at claromancy, for example, which is a specialized form of sortition. There are two words in that sentence that have been added to my vocabulary. Today, we're going to deal with another word that was fairly new to me, necromancy. This week, we are looking at the ways people in the Bible used divination or means to divine or discern insights into questions or to see into the future. We have looked at how Joseph used a chalice like a crystal ball and at an odd story from Numbers about trying to determine a case of adultery when there were no witnesses. But today, we're going to turn to a very odd, intriguing story in 1 Samuel known as the Witch of Endor. I guess this story really begins with Samuel himself, who was the last of the Bible men and women known as the judges and also the first prophet. The people went to Samuel to demand a king like other nations and despite the fact that Samuel warned them that they wouldn't like it or the taxation or the conscription into the army that that would mean, they demanded it even more. So Samuel anointed Saul and then served as the mediator between God and Saul. For a while things went okay. But pretty quickly they turned bad, and God raised up David to be king after Saul. The story of the witch of Endor comes in a time when Saul is still king, but he is clearly on his way out, and David is on the rise. The other thing you need to know is that by the time this story happens, Samuel has died. On Monday, I shared with you a passage from Deuteronomy that very clearly forbids sorcery, witches, divination, and people who consult with the dead and things like that. And to his credit, King Saul had driven them all out and made those practices against the law. However, Saul found himself in a difficult situation. He was at war with the Philistines, and a battle was looming. In all other circumstances like that, he could consult with Samuel to know whether or not to engage in the battle, whether or not God was with them and would give them victory. However, as I have said, Samuel had died. Saul tried the other methods they had to determine God's will through dreams or other prophets and so on, but none of them had revealed an answer. So Saul said to his people, Seek out a medium for me. They told him there was one in hiding in a place called Endor. That's where the word necromancy comes back in. Necromancy is one who consults the spirits of the dead, something like a seance today. But remember that Saul had outlawed this, so she is in hiding. Saul disguises himself and goes to her and asks her to practice her art for him. She replies, you are trying to get me in trouble. He promises her that no trouble will come and asks her to raise Samuel. Well, she does. And as soon as she does, she realizes that Saul is there. And once again, he promises her she isn't in trouble. Saul can't see Samuel but the woman does and communicates for him. It's not a happy reunion. Samuel is fiery mad at Saul for not following God's way and he tells Saul that they should go into battle but in the battle both Saul himself and Saul's son Jonathan will be killed. Well it happens just that way. They left the witch and went their way engaged in the battle and Saul was killed. The door was open for David to be king. All this is found beginning in 1 Samuel 28 and I encourage you to read the full story there. It's told in rich detail. You know, we are blessed. 
we don't need to consult with the dead we have a living God a living Christ who guides and leads us thanks for watching and remember to let this day belong to God